Coming up today on The Slate, who will win Best Picture? Alex makes his Oscar predictions. Plus, we finally review one of the biggest pictures of last year, Benjamin Button. Now marvel as I magically become better looking throughout the show. Hello and welcome to The Slate, the movie review show that's not afraid to get in Christian Bale's eyeline. First off, let's take a look at the latest Hollywood news. A lot of love for Freddy. The remake of Friday the 13th has made a killing at the box office. The slasher flick raked in over $40 million on its opening weekend. Releasing the film on Friday the 13th also proved to be an inspired move. What does this mean for future horror remakes? Hard to say, but we'll wait and see how the remake of John Carpenter's The Thing fares before we make our bets. Good news for Quentin Tarantino fans. The teaser trailer for the famed director's highly anticipated film, Inglorious Bastards, has been spotted in the wild. The two-minute clip now online gives QT fans a taste of the Nazi stomping action to come in the World War II film. Brad Pitt is heavily featured in the trailer. Angelina's hubby plays Lieutenant Aldo Rain as he gives a speech to his unit of Jewish soldiers demanding Nazi blood. Go to yahoo.com forward slash trailers to check it out. We here at The Slate are obsessed with Watchmen, and you should too. The new comic book film is directed by Zack Snyder, the man behind the epic film 300. This week, the trailer for the Tales of the Black Frider was released. It's the comic within the comic being released as a standalone animated film online. The trailer is a must-see and features the voice of none other than Spartan Gerard Butler. Go to MTV.com to watch it. Now let's take a look at a serious best picture contender. The Curious Case of Benjamin Button is the Hollywood adaptation of the classic F. Scott Fitzgerald short story. It's an epic story, with Brad Pitt portraying the life of Ben Button. Thanks to amazing special effects, the film captures how Button was born as an old man and ages backwards, growing younger. The film follows his exploits and his struggles through life, especially with his true love, played by Kate Blanchett. The movie was directed by David Fincher, whose other films include Fight Club, Seven, and Zodiac. And if the plot sounds familiar, that's because it was written by Eric Roth, the screenwriter of Forrest Gump. In May of 1945, when I was 26 years old, I came home. Queenie? Child, it's your brother, Benjamin. I didn't know he was my brother. There was no things you don't know, child. Get on out there and finish sweeping. Come here, wash your hands, help me with the table. Go on now. Turn around. Oh, you look like you've been born again. Younger than the springtime. I think that preacher laid hands on you, gave you a second life. I knew at that moment I saw you. You were special. I tell you what, my knees are sore because I've been on them every night asking the Lord. I said, God. Bring him home safely. Remember what I told you? You never know what's coming for you. That's right. Sit down. <laughs> well, you learn anything worth repeating? I sure saw some things. Oh, you seen some pain. Some joy, too? Sure, sure I did. Yeah, that's what I want to hear. <laughs> The Curious Case of Benjamin Button is a flawed film that triumphs because of its director's ambitions and the quality performances given by the cast. Some of the best performances, Julia Ormond as Kate Blanchett's daughter and Taraji B. Henson, who garnered an Oscar nomination for her performance. The rest of the cast gets the job done, but the real reason to see the film is David Fincher's massive undertaking. Fincher has made a nearly three-hour film that deals predominantly with death and the fleeting, beautiful moments that life spares. It is a deeply intimate film with an epic feel. Many critics and moviegoers have voiced their distaste over the film and have labeled it as a wannabe Forrest Gump. In fact, both films share a similar narrative structure. Benjamin goes off to war and returns, expecting that his love will be waiting. Instead, she has gone off. He waits and follows her until she becomes emotionally mature enough to be with him. Benjamin Button is very similar to Gump, 
but there are many scenes that are more emotionally charged than anything you'd find in the latter film. Eric Roth should be commended for giving the film some immediacy. It is narrated in a hospital just few hours prior to Hurricane Katrina. It's an appropriate setting, as the best years of Ben's life are in his hometown, New Orleans. The Curious Case is a very good film that tackles its morbid subject matter with a sense of poignancy. It deserves its, Os it deserves its Oscar nominations, especially for makeup and the score, which are both excellent. So who's going to win big at the Oscars this year? Well, our resident movie reviewer Alex is here to tell us all the big answers. Well, Oscar buzz is in the air, and now it's time to make our Oscar picks for 2009. Alex, are you ready? Always ready, Nick. All right, now keep in mind that you only have 30 seconds for each film. All right. All right, now let's start off with Best Picture. A few epic films this year, but which one do you think is going to take home Oscar? Well, it's unfortunate that The Dark Knight isn't going to get it, but it's going to be Slumdog Millionaire. Slumdog. It's, yeah, Slumdog's going to take it. It has all the buzz behind it. All, it's winning all the awards prior to this, the Golden Globes, the SAG. Yeah, there's a lot of hype around it. You know, and now you have this Bollywood cast that's you know, coming into you know, the frame here in Hollywood, and they're coming into mainstream cinema. And um, people are just really rallying behind this movie. They really enjoy it. It's Why? Really, Why are they rallying behind it's it? It's an inspirational story. You know? I mean, people can really affect with it, reflect with it. So I think that you know, Slumdog's going to be the big winner at the end of the day. All right, well now it's time for Best Director. Who impressed you this year? Well, I liked uh, David Fincher, but... Uh, Frankly, it's going to be Danny Boyle. All the buzz is around him this time. And, um, for what film? For uh, Slumdog Millionaire. Slumdog Millionaire. Again? Yeah, once again. Um, but uh, you know, he, he's done. A, he's had a lot of good. He's done a lot of good movies over the past few years. Train Spotting, Twenty Eight Days Later. I mean, it's his day. So I mean, the the British uh, filmmaker really deserves his moment in the sun. And um, I mean, he made a fantastic film. So why not give it to him? We'll have to see how it turns out. Mm -hmm. The most hyped category, of course, is Best Actress. Which leading lady is going home with Oscar gold this year? Well, funny thing is that Kate Winslet made a joke on the TV show uh, Extras in which she said that um, if she ever did a Holocaust film that she would win an Oscar. And luckily, ironically enough, she has made a Holocaust film and now she's going to win the Oscar. But, you know, she's had a really great year. She, um, she had Revolutionary Road come out with uh, her one-time best bud, uh, Leo. And she did a great performance there. And the reader, you know, just the icing on the cake. And she does a fantastic job after six nominations. She deserves it. All right. Well, now we're on to Best Actor. Tell me, Sean Penn and Milk, do you think he stands a chance? No, Sean Penn, I think, is going to, no. is going to lose out to Mickey Rourke in The Wrestler. Okay, why The Wrestler? Well, uh, Mickey Rourke, I mean, he's had a really rough road coming back up on top. I mean, he had a couple of good roles leading into this. I mean, he had Marv in Sin City. Mm -hmm. and, this uh, is his comeback. This is his comeback movie. This is the movie that people are going to remember him for. And... Um, they love a comeback story in Hollywood. They love it. They love it. Every year you have a new one. And, uh, you know, he's going to come back into the spotlight as usual because he's, he is a really good actor, though. And we'll he's see what kind of work comes out of this for him. Mm -hmm. Now, best supporting actress, who do you see? I see Penelope Cruz. Penelope Cruz. Mm, gorgeous body. She's going to look awesome. Um, but uh, she's going to win for Vicky Cristina Barcelona. She really drove that movie into, you know, new heights. Uh, it was a great screenplay by Woody Allen, but she took that character of Maria Elena to, like, another realm and she does it really well playing off the other actors like Javier Bardem and uh, Scarlett Johansson but she's the, she's the really the, the focal point of that movie and uh, it's kind of like with our Best Supporting Actor nominees who I mean they're really good in their films too. Alright well let's talk about Best Supporting Actor. What's your pick? It's going to be Heath Ledger. There's that whole effect, you know, Ledger. Penelope Cruz effect because, you know, I mean, he drives that film as well. He drove that film into being the second biggest, you know, Hollywood box office movie of the year of all time as well. Um, but what so, I want to know is, if he wins, who's going to accept for him? I think Christopher Nolan's going to accept Christopher for him. Christopher Nolan, the director. Because he knew him best. And, um, and he's accepted it on his behalf before, and he's always given the best speeches. And I think that the, the family would really approve if he went up and, and took the award home. It would definitely be a great honor to him. All right. Well, we'll have to tune into the Oscars on ABC on February 22nd and see who takes home Oscar gold. And sadly, that's all we have for this episode of The Slate. Don't forget to check out our new website at theslate.tv and subscribe to our new video podcast. Join us next week when we have the recap of the Oscar winners. Goodbye, and thanks for watching.